Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on Windows operating systems, so let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Now, this video is going to be specifically focused on Windows Server operating systems. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put up a list of the compatible operating systems. That's going to be 2012, 2012, 2012 R2, 2016, and 2019. Now, we have uh, heard some people have been successful with getting 2022 to work, uh, but there's definitely some flaws with it as a whole, and it's not just outwardly compatible with all the Gen 9s. You're going to need to have a V4, and there's a whole bunch of other specific things as well. So as of right now, we're not putting that on our list. This, but in the future there might be some workarounds and if someone knows all the great workarounds great put a comment down below to help other users out but as of right now we're going to put it uh, all the way up to 2019. So let's hop into what we're going to do in this video. So what we're going to do this video we're going to leave in the description section an ISO file that you can use to put onto a USB that you need to make bootable, pop it into your Gen 9 server, and we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to upload your operating system locally into your Gen 9. So really, that's what we're going to do. So let's hop in and get going. Hey, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Windows Server. Before we get started with the actual installation, there's going to be a couple things that we're going to need to do. First, we're going to need to create a bootable USB drive with the Windows Server ISO file mounted to it. In this video, we're going to be using an evaluation copy of Windows Server so we can actually demonstrate the installation process. If you need to download a Windows Server ISO file, we'll go ahead and provide a link in the description below to where you can go ahead and download it. I would also like to note that you will need to purchase a license in order to use Windows Server. You'll still be able to install Windows Server without a license, but you won't have the full functionality of the operating system. Once we have everything we need, we can plug our bootable USB drive into our server, and then we can go ahead and power it on. During post, we can go ahead and press F11 so we can head to the boot menu. And then once we're in boot menu, we want to select our bootable USB drive. For us, this is gonna be the front USB 2 option. It may be worded a little bit different for you, just depending on where you have your USB drive installed. But for us, this is the one we're gonna select. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on it. And doing so is going to start the Windows Server installation. It may take a little bit of time to fully load into the installation. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward. And then once it's complete, we'll go ahead and resume. Once everything is loaded, we will be prompted with this window right here where we can select a language. We're going to keep everything as the default. We're going to leave it to English and we're going to have our keyboard and input method be US. Once we have everything selected, we want to go ahead and click on next. And once you've clicked on next, you want to go ahead and click install now. Now we want to select the specific operating system that we want to install. So for us, we're going to install the standard evaluation desktop experience. And then once we've selected it, we can go ahead and click on next. The next screen is going to display the software license terms. We want to go ahead and click on this box on the bottom left of the screen so we can accept the license terms. And once that checkbox is clicked, we can go ahead and click on next. Next, we'll be asked which type of installation do we want to do. Since we're doing a fresh installation of Windows Server, we want to do a custom install. If you're upgrading from a previous version of Windows Server, um, let's say you already had Windows Server installed and you wanted to upgrade to the next version, you would go ahead and do the upgrade. But like I said, since we are doing that fresh install, we are going to do the custom installation. Next, we'll need to choose the storage device that we want to install Windows Server onto. We just have one drive that we are going to install this on. If you have multiple drives installed to your system, those will be displayed as well. So you just wanna make sure that you pick the proper one and the drive that you want to use. With this drive, we wanna create a new partition. So we wanna click the button that says new, and then it's going to ask us for the size. We're just gonna leave it as is because we want the whole partition to span across this one drive. So once we're happy with the size that we want, we can click on apply. We'll then get another dialog box. So we just want to go ahead and press OK. And before you press OK, I just want to note that anytime you're creating a new partition, if there is any data that is already existing on that drive, it will be erased. If you're good to move forward, you can just go ahead and press OK. 
And as you can see, three partitions have been created. We have the primary partition, the MSR partition, and the system partition. Now we just wanna go ahead and click next. And now the actual installation is gonna begin. All of the Windows files are going to be copied and installed onto the drive that we selected. This part may take several minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and fast forward until it is complete, and then we'll go ahead and pick back up. Once it is done, there will be a countdown to restart the server. If you want to restart it now, you can go ahead and press restart now, or you can just wait for that countdown to end. And once that countdown ends, it is going to reboot our server. So once our server is rebooted back up, no need to touch anything. It's actually going to do a second reboot. So we'll just keep waiting it out. And after that second reboot, it's going to boot us automatically into Windows Server. There's no need to press anything during post as the operating system will automatically boot up. Once Windows Server is booted up, we will be asked to create a password. This password can be anything you want it to be. I just recommend that you keep password security standards in mind. Once we've created a password that we're happy with, we can go ahead and press on finish. And there we have it. Our next step is to just press Control alt delete to unlock, and then all we gotta do is enter in the password we just created, and we have successfully logged in to Windows Server. As you can see, it was not very difficult to do at all, and if you follow these steps in this video, you will have no issues at all. If you have any issues or have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, go ahead and click that like, and if you're looking to purchase any servers, whether it's for personal use or for enterprise use, we got a wide variety in stock. We stock many different brands such as Dell, HP, Supermicro, IBM, and Cisco. And if you've got a specific system or a specific configuration that you're looking for, hit us up at sales at cloudninjas.com. That is sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Anyways, take care and we'll see you in the next one.